The very latest details on Mandy Rose's firing from WWE with the company believing she way, way, way crossed the line with her exclusive explicit content posted to her website. Got the latest details on the reaction internally to the former NXT Women's Champion departure from the company. Speaking of NXT, we have the ratings for this week's episode, which did feature Rose dropping the championship to Roxanne Perez. Speaking of the NXT titles, are there changes to the championship belts coming soon? Kevin Owens reportedly pitched a match to Shawn Michaels pressing the WWE Hall of Famer to come out of retirement once again and Vince McMahon's Vice documentary how did it fare in the ratings Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into and still the biggest story dominating the world of professional wrestling, specifically WWE right now, is the firing, the release of former NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose just days, I mean hours, minutes after dropping the NXT Women's Championship this past week on NXT on the USA Network. And we have some more details as to why WWE felt they had no choice but to release the former NXT Women's champion. Now, further details are continuing to emerge regarding WWE's firing of Mandy Rose due to her paid content service. It's worth reiterating a misconception. WWE didn't fire Rose just because of the fact she had a subscription service, but more so because of the nature of what she was posting on there, which, according to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, the company believes, quote, way, way, way crossed the line. Of course, you can still argue whether that's right or wrong on WWE's part, but it's important to note that distinction. Meltzer explained how NXT booker Shawn Michaels found out and what his immediate reaction was, saying, quote, They switched the whole show around because they, what happened was, there was a meeting and Matt Bloom brought to Shawn Michaels, told him what some of the stuff that she's been posting on her subscription service is, and told Shawn what was there, and Shawn's immediate thing was, we've got to get the title off her immediately. Immediately switched around the whole show, got the title off of her. Meltzer added that the plan was for Perez to win the title from Rose anyway, but that would have been on either January 10 or February 4. But instead, Michaels made the decision to hastily move it forward as soon as he found out what Rose had been posting. The following day, news emerged that Mandy Rose had been released from her WWE contract. Meltzer added, quote, She's had the subscription service and it got popular and lucrative and she went further and further. And the feeling was that she way, way, way crossed the line. And they believe that that they had absolutely no choice but to get rid of her. Fightful Select, Sean Ross Sapp broke the story and previously reported that Rose had indicated to people in recent months that she did realize what she was posting could get her into trouble with WWE management. Rose's reign with the NXT Women's Championship clocked in at 413 days, so it was just four off being the second longest NXT Women's title reign of all time behind Oscars. And the reaction to this certainly is still ongoing and certainly... There's a lot that's still being discovered about this and a lot of people debating this. And it certainly, as I mentioned, is is something that's quickly evolving. And again, just one day Mandy Rose is the NXT Women's Champion. The next day, not only is she not the champion, but she no longer has a, a job. And again, Dave Meltzer provided some more details as to how this show was put together too. Dave Meltzer tweeted about it yesterday afternoon saying, quote, there's a lot uh, to the Mandy Rose firing today and the title change last night was a last minute decision based on the fact she was getting fired and not the original plan. Again, Rose held the belt for a staggering 413 days, making her the third longest reigning champion in NXT history. Again, only a few days behind Shayna Baszler, whose reign was 416 days. She was never going to match Asuka's reign of 522 days. But certainly, seeing that the streak ended so suddenly, not even on a premium live event, makes a lot more sense now, given the added context as to WWE wanting to hastily not only get the belt off of her, but also release her from the company as well. So... I've seen a lot of debate about this over the last um, 24 hours, and I think the debate will continue. I, and this isn't me sitting on the fence, I, I can see both sides of this one, and I think it's important to understand both sides of this. From the WWE perspective, I can understand their reaction, having seen now some of these images, 
it's not in line with what WWE uh, expects from their talent. And I've seen a lot of people saying, well, there have been other WWE talents that have had photos, shall we say, surface on social media and leaked to social media. What's the difference? The difference to me, and, and it's all about perception and opinion, but to me, the key word is their leak. These were images that uh, were posted without the, the consent of other people. Uh, these were images that were you know, stolen off people's uh, iCloud, etc. And they found their way out onto the internet. These weren't images that um, these people were actively selling, really, for a subscription service. That's what Mandy Rose was doing here. She had this subscription exclusive um, content service with her fans that people were actively paying for. And she was profiting off. And clearly, she... Maybe WWE knew she was doing a subscription service, but didn't know the actual context of the service. Or maybe they didn't know about it at all. Clearly, people did know about it. I didn't know about it. I think quite a few people did not know about it. And it felt like it was being kept somewhat hush-hush again because she knew the dangers of what she was doing. She was aware of the potential ramifications of doing it. Now, again, Fightful Select, Sean Ross Sapp, yes, they reported that WWE also felt like Mandy Rose did not want to stop doing this service. And by all accounts, if you go to the person and say, we don't like what you're doing here, we don't have an issue with you having, let's say, a subscription service, we have an issue with the content you're posting on it, you've got to cease posting that kind of content. If she says no, what else can WWE do from a company perspective? And I, and I do sympathize with WWE there. But when it comes to Mandy Rose, at the same time, you could argue, well, you know, um, again, she's making more money doing that than she is on WWE television. By all accounts, she was making more than main roster money with this subscription service. And I would assume now, with the fallout of all of this, <laughs> and the page is still active, she posted out a message to her fans on her website yesterday saying the page isn't going anywhere. One would think, logically, subscriptions have just gone through the roof <laughs> to that website, to that service. And she would have made a pretty penny. And good for her. Good for her when it comes to that. And I think it has opened up the door. It has opened up the conversation of, you know, of of double standards within the company, of people being treated differently to other people, people having other scandals and keeping their job. Uh, whereas in comparison, some people having scandals, if you want to call this a scandal, and not keeping their job. People are pointing out to people that have been on the wrong side of the law and kept their job. People that have you know, uh, failed tests, drug tests or wellness policy tests and have kept their job. What's the difference? Where's the line? Where, where's the line in which WWE deems it to be acceptable or unacceptable? Why was, why was she, why was she not suspended? Why was she fired? And again, I, th I think it's really important to understand context in all of these things, because for instance, let's, let's look at the Matt Riddle situation right now he failed a second wellness uh, policy test he failed a second drugs test and wwe said to him they gave him the ultimatum you go to rehab or you're fired and it's kind of what would appear to be the similar kind of ultimatum they gave to mandy rose here of course it's not the same as failing wellness policy test but it's a case of that kind of content those some kind of explicit photos if you deem them to be explicit um that's not in line with with our um our parameters of, of what we are as a company. At the same time, I don't know what the wording is in a WWE contract, but there might be things in the WWE contract saying you can't do that kind of stuff. And it's to our discretion whether that's that kind of content or not. Uh, but again, where do you draw the line? And I think it's opened up a really interesting and diverse conversation about where is the line about stuff you can and can't do? Where is the line about what is and isn't explicit? And again, those people that are saying, well, these people had stuff that that came online, but they weren't they weren't selling it. They weren't they wasn't that wasn't part of a subscription paid service. I think that's kind of shifting the goalposts a little bit. But I do agree that, you know, people have done far worse in this company and kept their job. So again, where where is that line? I don't know where that line is. And I think it has opened up this real um strange conversation which well, strange probably not the right word but an interesting conversation and uh, feel free to have it in the comment section below let me know your thoughts on this because um 
I, I don't see Mandy Rose coming back to WWE. As she said, well, as reports have mentioned, she has no intention of closing down the page because she is making more money. And, you know, a pro wrestling career is a short career. She's on NXT. She's on the developmental brand. Yes, if she goes to the main roster, which she was on before, she probably, I, I don't know if she's still on a main roster contract. I don't know. If she's still on a main roster contract, but she's making more money doing that subscription service and she is wrestling and WWE wants to go to her and say, you've got to stop doing that. She would be well within her rights to say, well, no, okay, you're going you're gonna to make that up then? Are you going to pay that amount? Because if you're not going to pay that amount, I'll leave this and I'll, I'll just focus more on that. And I'll make more money doing that. And bear in mind, there'll be other wrestling companies that want me so I can scratch that wrestling itch for another company. Still make good wrestling money, by the way. And also make even more money doing that subscription service. So what's she supposed to do? So I think it's two parties really butting heads and WWE saying stop, and I can understand the, the reason for saying stop, but Mandy Rose saying, I don't want to stop because I'm making more money than I am here. So it, then it just leads to both going their separate ways, it kind of feels like. And it's a really unfortunate situation because I feel like Mandy Rose had improved significantly in an NXT run. I think that, you know, during a difficult period in NXT history, she did a good job. And the way it's ended, not having a proper storybook closure to that one's really unfortunate. Um, and again, I think it opens up another really interesting conversation about morality and about double standards and about where that line is in terms of WWE's perception. Matt Bloom, you know, in this meeting with Shawn Michaels, did he just tell him the, 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 the images or the content or did he show him? Because it's important to have the context there as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Again, I'm sure this is a story that will continue to develop. I'm sure this is a story that will have more reactions. I'm sure this is a story because of just the general nature of it and how much conversation it is generating will continue to evolve. And as we get more details on it, we'll talk about it, of course, here on the channel. Speaking of NXT, of course, it was a really you know, crazy week for NXT in terms of the, the television product with that title change. And there was at least one twist on Tuesday's episode of NXT as Mandy Rose's title reign came to an end after 413 days. But all in all, it was a solid night in terms of viewership for the show. According to data shared by WrestleNomics, 666,000 viewers on average tuned in to NXT on the USA Network. On average of, uh, an average rather of 222,000 viewers between the ages of 18 and 49 watched the episode, which was good for a 0 0.17 18 to 49 rating. That is the highest such rating for the show since October 18 and the highest overall viewership since November 1st. The viewership among those aged 18 and 49 was up 27%, while overall viewership rose by 25%, ranking the show 13th in the 18 to 49 demo on cable originals for the day. That said, NXT wasn't the only wrestling watch program that aired on Tuesday evening. The Nine Lives of Vincent Mann documentary aired on Vice TV as well. I'll give you an update on the ratings for that also as well later on in the show. Outside of the ring, the late night NBA game on TNT uh, between the Boston Celtics and the LA Lakers led cable with a 0.61 18 to 49 rating, while the earlier matchup between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Golden State Warriors came second with a 0.45. But in terms of the numbers for NXT, they'll be very happy actually with that, you know, uh, with viewership um, in the 18 to 49 demo being up 27%, overall viewership being up 25%. they will be happy. I would assume that's probably the fallout of um, NXT deadline. And the news had kind of begun to break prior to the show. You can't ignore this because the people that watch NXT on a Tuesday night, it's a smaller audience, it's an older audience, therefore it's a smarter audience uh, in terms of people that are, you know, more uh, in tune with what's going on behind the scenes and it had broken that there was a very high chance that we were going to see a title change on that show and that Mandy Rose was going to be dropping the championship so I think a lot of people had tuned in Tuesday with the mindset of there are rumors there is mumblings and there is murmurs about something going on in NXT this evening especially when it comes to the women's championship and the Mandy Rose situation so I think that's probably why it's going to be really interesting to see if that rating reflects next week obviously we know the next two episodes of NXT are going to be taped of course Mandy Rose wasn't at the tapings last night so it's going to be interesting to see 
if there's any bump next week. I wouldn't think so as we get into the holiday season, the holiday period. Ratings tend to drop for pro wrestling and it's taped and there might be a bit of outrage about the Mandy Rose situation too. So we'll have to wait and see what happens for the ratings for NXT next week. Speaking of NXT as well, the titles are changing. The times are changing and so are the titles. A major change may be coming to some NXT Championship bouts very soon. In April 2022, this year, WWE changed the NXT title bouts to have rainbow, uh, rainbow color tint to them. This was to match the NXT 2.0 rainbow logo. However, the NXT brand changed their logo to a new black and gold and white design in September following the one-year anniversary of 2.0. A new report has revealed that WWE may be about to revert back to the older design. Belt fan Dan took to Twitter and revealed that a rumor that WWE are going to replace the rainbow version with the non-colored version of the title bouts. He tweeted, quote, word on the street is the rainbow NXT bouts are going to be replaced with the prior non-colored ones. The current champions for the brand, of course, are NXT champion Bron Breaker, new NXT tag team champions for the New Day, new NXT women's champion Roxanne Perez, and NXT women's tag team champions Katana Chance and Caden Carter. As I mentioned, Perez just won her championship this past Tuesday on NXT. And I'm glad. I mean, the the 2.0 era, as you know, strange as it was, feels like a lifetime ago. And in the same way that the old NXT championships fell out of place in the 2.0 era because they just there was black and gold in a place filled of color, and you know it was like a Jackson Pollock painting every week. Um, now these NXT 2.0 championships fill out of place in the current version of NXT. They can't get everything together, can they? So uh, going back to the old bouts, I'm not sure if that's the right thing. Um, maybe they should just go back to something different. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But that is the rumor that they're going to be going back to the old championships soon. Speaking of NXT, of course, the person running the show nowadays is Shawn Michaels. But he was recently pitched to have a match against none other than Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens versus Shawn Michaels. Well... According to Fightful Select, if Kevin Owens had his way, that match would have happened. Kevin Owens appeared on Kevin Raphael's podcast this week. It's a French-speaking podcast. And said that he recently inquired about a potential match with none other than HB Shizzle. In the interview, Owens noted that after the Stone Cold Steve Austin match at WrestleMania this year, he figured nothing was impossible and nothing was out of the reach of KO. When Owens went to NXT for the KO show, he had a sit down with Shawn Michaels and asked him if he'd considered having one last match with him. For Owens, he said he was it was so he could say that he wrestled his two favorites of all time. Now, after hearing this, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select followed up for clarity and learned that Michaels told Owens he'd be lying if he didn't think about doing another match, especially when he saw the kind of match that Steve Austin's had with uh, Kevin Owens at WrestleMania this year. However, he also said he doesn't think that he should. Of course, famously, AJ Styles had also once pitched a match with Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania that got turned down. Michaels, ultimately, after retiring at WrestleMania 26, having one of the perfect and best retirements of all time and being one of the very few to not come out of retirement, did what every pro wrestler has done after they retired, came out of retirement for a crown jewel tag team match that he told numerous people was the biggest payday of his career. It was roughly reported that he earned in the neighborhood of $3 million for that match. Uh, at Crown Jewel in 2018, of course, it was DX versus Brothers of Destruction in one of the worst WWE matches ever. <laughs> and I think that really soured Michaels on coming back ever again. Look, Michaels was, this is the thing. My, for whatever reason, Shawn Michaels, after he retired, got in his head that coming back, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be what he would want it to be. And it wouldn't live up to his expectations. And I'm not sure that it ever would have, you know, and I'd have, you know, I didn't want to see Shawn Michaels come out of retirement. If he did, I wanted it to be at WrestleMania. I wanted it to be against AJ Styles. I wanted it to be against, you know, so whoever, AJ felt like the real one that it could be. He felt like this generation's version of Shawn Michaels, didn't he? Um, and for whatever, and then he put himself into a match, Shawn Michaels, that was never going to live up to expectation because it was with three other guys that were all in their 50s. So it was never going to live up to expectation. And then afterwards, he was like, I told you so. It sucked. Well, of course it was going to suck. You know, it, it was with The Undertaker and Kane and Triple H in 2018. When I said, when all of you were in your 50s, of course it wasn't great. But if you had a match against AJ Styles at WrestleMania, it would have been good. If you had a match against Kevin Owens, it would have been good. I understand Shawn Michaels... Um, concerns about creative. I remember him saying to the AJ Styles thing, but what happens then? If I come back and I lose, 
then that's proved the story that I can't hang, that I shouldn't have come out of retirement. But if I come back and I win, what does that do for AJ Styles? You know, and, and that's kind of also the point too. And I think that's fair. But at the same time, you know, Steve Austin beat Kevin Owens earlier this year. Nobody cares like about the result. They just care that Steve Austin came back and wrestled. And that's a minor miracle. And the fact of everything that's happened this year, it's not even, it barely scratches the surface in terms of the biggest stories of the year. So Shawn Michaels, look at the shape of him. He could come back and do another match. Why couldn't he? As long as it was at WrestleMania and as long as it was against an AJ Styles. I mean, I probably have more preference to see Michaels versus AJ Styles than Michaels versus Kevin Owens, to be honest with you. I think Steve Austin versus Owens made more sense. Trash talkers, they both use the stunner. You know, that makes a lot of sense. But... I, Michaels versus KO, I can't say I've got a real desire to see that one. But if Michaels were to come back, I'd want it to be against, again, someone of the current roster uh, at WrestleMania, and I think it could work. Finally, we kind of touched on this earlier on, but Vince McMahon, he's been in the headlines this week for the wrong reasons, as always. And the viewership figures for the Vice documentary on Vince McMahon that aired on December 13th have been revealed. While there was real-time news breaking regarding uh, Vince McMahon, some were hoping for a bombshell documentary from the two-hour-long special from the uh, on rather the former WWE CEO and chairman. However, there wasn't really much in the way of new details. Fans that may have not been up to date on episodes of the series Dark Side of the Ring or knew little about Vince McMahon got a general gist of the story, but it really is not much to watch. It was no real new information, to be honest. Vice's 120-minute special drew some interest, clocking 95,000 overnight viewers with a 0.04 rating in the 18-49 demo. But again, same night, NXT drew 666,000 viewers, so it's very, very small potatoes. Um, the two-hour-long special reviewed the life and scandals of Vince McMahon, although revealed very little new information regarding recent allegations, nor did it delve into the very recent reports that McMahon may be interested in returning to WWE. Quite a few people criticized it for saying that it really didn't offer up what it kind of said that it might i think bigger and more expansive documentaries on mcmahon will come in the future but not anytime soon because i don't think that story's finished just yet i think there's still more to come uh, and with articles suggesting that vince wants to make a return or more allegations are going to come to the surface i think that we're going to have to wait and see i mean it would appear that that netflix documentary is still being made about vince mcmahon uh, with wwe's permission what they investigate going forward, I don't know. But of course, if we get any more information, we'll let you know here on the channel. But there you go, guys. That's the latest WWE news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.